Welcome back to Blackthorn Prod. I'm Noah. So, as some of you may know, this past weekend I took part in my fourth Ladam Dari game jam. Quick reminder, Ladam Dari is a game creation event that gets developers making a small game around a given theme in two to three days. The theme of this Ladam Dari was Sacrifices Must Be Made. Now, just before diving into this behind the scenes video, here's a shout out to Joseph, Couch Ferrets Mix Games, and your brother for supporting me financially via Patreon. With that said, this time I teamed up with another cool game dev YouTuber called Sam, who runs the YouTube channel Saiku. As the Ladandari rules go, those that work in teams have three days to create their game. We decided that he would handle the programming, and I would work on all the art and animations. We would of course both work together on the game's design and story. Our game dev journey together started on Friday night where we had a small voice chat to set up Unity Collab. Unity Collab was an awesome and pretty easy way for us to work on the project together and send assets, be that art, sounds, animations or scripts back and forth to each other. Once we discovered the theme on Saturday morning, we began brainstorming for game ideas. We eventually settled on creating a top-down shooter game, where the player would every so often have to sacrifice something, but simultaneously gain something else in return. For example, lose health, but gain speed, or sacrifice vision to increase fire rates. I began by creating the art for the player character, while Sam started coding the basic player controls and shooting system. Though we didn't have a very clear story in mind at that point, we'd briefly talked about some themes we wanted to touch on with this game, namely the player character risking his sanity to gain incredible powers. Which is why the main character is a squishy brain, the whole battle is basically taking place in the character's mind. Pretty soon we had the core mechanics in place. The player could run around the game world and defeat strange, equally squishy, brain-like enemies. As always, I created the art using Adobe Photoshop and then animated them directly inside of Unity. And again, thanks to Unity Collab, sending all these assets to Sam was simply a matter of clicking a big blue button. Sam, meanwhile, worked hard on implementing what we called the Quirk System, where after each wave of enemies, the player could choose one of three cards and be inflicted with the negative and positive effects described on that card. I then created eight mini boss characters, basically larger, more beefy foes that would spawn once every wave and that would trigger the quirk system. Now, other than my brother Liam and Eric Scarding, Sam was one of the very first persons I've actually worked on a project with, and I'm glad to say the experience was really interesting and enjoyable. One great benefit, for example, was not needing to worry about programming too much, but instead be able to relax and pour most of my energy into what I like doing most, creating characters animations and stories. We had multiple talks via Discord and being able to share ideas and make plans together was both fun and motivating. Damn, not only did I have the Ladam Dare deadline to motivate me, but knowing that Sam was creating the game alongside me and obviously I wanted to keep up the pace was an extra encouraging boost. And of course, just being able to joke and talk about random things was a pleasant change from silent, lonely game dev. I love the peace of making games alone and the absolute creative freedom that comes with it. But yeah, working with other people like Sam or my brother are welcoming fresh experiences. On day two, I worked on the environment, menus and intro scene. At this point, I was trying to clarify what the whole story was about. In short, the player character is reading through an ancient book that can grant incredible powers, but might also turn the reader insane. As you can see here, the ground looks like paper, with scribbles and writing all over the place. Because it's the book that's creating this conflict after all. Sam, meanwhile, continued work on the quirk system and fixed bugs. He also got the player looking absolutely crazy when defeated. Basically, we were making great progress and had a working, pretty fun game by the end of day two. All that was really left were sounds and some polishing, which I did on Monday morning, roughly 20 hours before the deadline. <laughs> to recap, making this game was a lot of fun. The journey was fantastic and one that I'll gladly repeat, and I would love if you tried the game out for yourself and gave me and Sam your thoughts on it. But I was a bit dissatisfied to have made yet another top-down shooter. I made a lot of shooters in the past, Midnight Fire, Gory, Mario Madness, 
the fire of belief, even my whole Udemy course made with my bro is about creating an entire top-down shirt game from scratch using Unity. Since working with Sam was new and interesting enough on its own, I wasn't too bothered obviously by the fact that I had again fallen prey to the easy action shooter idea. But since there was still 20 hours before the deadline, I felt I had enough time to try and make something else with the theme, sacrifices must be made. I was still full of energy and wanted to try and innovate a bit more. I thought back on a small game prototype I had been working on a few weeks ago and that never saw the light of day. It was about a bunch of poor game characters being judged and ultimately destroyed by the player. I loved the idea of a direct conversation between the player and game characters. Having the player, the actual real person on the other side of the screen be a part of the game world it's just so interesting in my opinion. And then that vague idea and the theme of the jam, sacrifices must be made, clicked together and ended up a few hours later as a small game called Please Player. Now I beg that you first play the game before finishing this video. It's one of those weird tiny games that's best experienced firsthand and without having been spoiled. With that said, the game is basically a test. How far will the player go to finish the game? What are you willing to do to just see the whole thing through? In this case, you'll have to blow up grannies, monsters, dogs, even a poor baby. Each character talks directly to the player, begs for mercy, threatens, tries to seduce or show him some reason. I had a lot of fun acting out each character using my microphone and audacity, such as the old granny, where am I? Is <laughs> the terrified weirdo, please don't kill me, please player, really when you press the red button, I'll be really sore. <laughs> be horrible. Or the angry dude. I'm going to destroy that button. I'm going to destroy it. You just watch me, you sick little- Obviously, I edited my voice slightly for each character, changing the pitch to make it more squeaky or deep, and adding some echo and reverb at times. It's a real joy seeing simple, cartoony drawings suddenly come to life, full of personality and character with some voice acting. Again, there's not much gameplay here at all. It's just a small experimental game, but one which I'm proud of because it says something new. It offers a unique experience players have never seen or lived before. That's really what I want to make. New, fresh and innovative games. Even if many don't like them, that's fine. The most important for me is that I'm being creative and not sticking too much to routine formulas and games that have been made over and over again. And of course, I want to have fun making games. I want to enjoy this journey and I usually have a great time when I'm taking risks, doing stuff that might be a catastrophe or could end up being really cool. I love working on projects where I don't really know how things will turn out, awesome or bad. It's an exciting surprise. So to recap, it was a crazy weekend. I was able to do full-time what I love, and that's making games. I was also reminded that it's already been a whole year since I created my very first Game Jam game, Be Yourself for Ludum Dari 40. I've actually made 18 games since then. They're small, humble little projects, but important stepping stones leading to something bigger. That's my new year resolution for 2019. Work on a larger game project. Something with more time and thought and love put into it. I'm just really curious to see what game I can create in say six months or even one year. Almost everything I've made has been done in a weekend or one week. I want to take the next step and I feel like I have something interesting on my hands. Full of potential, for now buried in some obscure folder. With that said, thanks so much for having watched this video. Again, feedback on both games will be so appreciated. I wanted to also thank these amazing people for supporting me financially via Patreon. And of course, Sam for the great Ladam Dari experience. Note that Sam will also be releasing a video on his channel with his point of view on this LD43 weekend. So keep an eye out for that. I also wanted to remind you all that if you're interested in learning how to make a top-down shooter game yourself, me and my brother created a whole Udemy course on the topic. The link to that is in the description. Lastly, if you made a Ladam Dari game yourself, first of all, a big well done to you, and secondly, why don't you join the Blackthorn Prod Discord server and share what you made with me and others from this community. Okay, see you soon. Cheers. Cheers.